My name is Kevin Anderson. Um, I'm f Professor of Energy and Climate Change at, at the University of Manchester. And just to be open, I used to uh, design and build offshore oil platforms. That's a, my past. So it's a 10 minute tour, which you can't all see, unfortunately, you can't see the slides um, uh, uh, on climate change. And I'm going to touch on what is the greenhouse effect? What is climate change? What is global warming? Uh, what are the main sources of the rising emissions of greenhouse gases? And if we get time, what, we, what are we committed to do about it? So starting off with what is the greenhouse effect? Um, so this, this diagram, if you can see it, is not to scale. So here we have the sun, and here we have the earth, where we all live. And um, what we know, just from using basic physics, physics we learn at school, is we know how far the earth is from the sun, and we can therefore work out what the temperature, the average temperature of our planet would be, given where it is in the solar system. And we can do that for every planet. I mean, we work it out, we get the Earth is minus 18 degrees centigrade on average. Now, we know that's rubbish because it's obviously a lot warmer than that. But when we measure it, we find it's plus 15. So how come the physics tells us it's minus 18, and yet when we actually live on the Earth, we see it's actually on average, it's 15 degrees. And there's a big difference between those two. And the reason we have got difference is because of the makeup of our atmosphere. So the atmosphere around the planet um, has in it greenhouse gases. It has oxygen and nitrogen and other things that we can breathe from, but it has greenhouse gases, small quantities of them. Carbon dioxide, methane, you will have heard of. Water vapor is another one. So there's a lot of these greenhouse gases. So what are these things, these greenhouse gases? Well, what they do is they trap some of the sunlight that lies on the Earth that would normally reflect back out into space. They trap it like, a, like the glass of a greenhouse. That's why a greenhouse gets warmer inside. And so the atmosphere, the greenhouse gases, act like that, and they trap a little bit of the extra warmth from the sun. So some reflects back out, some of the heat goes back out, some of it bounces around in the atmosphere and warms the planet and holds it at about 15 degrees warmer. So without the greenhouse effect, which we've known about for the last 200 years or so, without the greenhouse effect, there would be no life on the planet. So thankfully, we have life on the planet because of the greenhouse effect, so it's a good thing. So what is this thing we hear called climate change? What's that? Well, there are six key things on the, about the climate. Firstly, we have gravity. But the gravity that of our planet, of Earth, is such that it holds the atmosphere there. Unlike Mars, which it's floated away, the Earth is big enough that it's held the atmosphere there. The Earth then spins inside of this gas, inside of the atmosphere. It's like putting your hand out of a, of a window in a car or a bus. You feel the air that's different. So that causes some wind. And then, of course, the Earth isn't flat. It's got mountains and hills and buildings. So as the Earth spins, it causes turbulence as these mountains spin through this, this atmosphere. But all of these are relatively constant, and we know them very well. We understand them really well. They don't really change. The next thing, of course, is the sun. The sun sends, Earth, um, sends energy to the Earth, and that varies. We're in what's called um, an El Nino at the moment, so we have particular warm cycles and cold cycles. But we understand those well. They've been understood for years as well. We also understand things like volcanoes, and they can have a big impact on the climate, but it's usually quite short-lived, maybe two or three years impact generally. And then we have life on the planet, and that varies a lot. So we've got forests and so forth, but we've now got increasingly our own animals and so forth, and then, of course, what we as humans do, industry and things like that. Now, these vary, and they vary, um, and, they, and they cause climate change. So these three change over time, and they cause climate change, and they always have. So climate change goes right back to the beginning of the planet. Nothing new. We've always had it. So what is global warming? Well, global warming is probably best described as human-induced climate change that we have brought about. And it's given a fancy title, so if you ever see it, we love fancy titles in universities. Anthropogenic climate change just means global warming that we've caused. Um, and we think of it really as starting with the Industrial Revolution. So about the 1850s, there or thereabouts, sometime around about then when we started burning fossil fuels, really. So that's what global warming is. So the next thing is, well, what, what are the emissions, what are the greenhouse gases that bring about this global warming? Um, and, and where do they come from? What, you know, what are the main sources? And why has there been this big increase in emissions of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? So um, I will come back to that in a minute. The main sources are agriculture, from animals and from fertilizer use. Deforestation, chopping down our trees and our forests, that puts a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Industrial processes like making cement or making plastics or refrigeration, and then burning fossil fuels. So that's another massive one. And actually when you put the numbers in for this, about 20% of the warming and the gases that we see come from agriculture and food and deforestation, land use if you like. 
about 10% come from industrial things, a little bit less, but about 10%. And about 70% comes from burning fossil fuels. So it's mostly burning fossil fuels and agriculture. They're the two really big ones in this. Okay, what fossil fuels? Fossil fuels um, are petrol, uh, diesel, gas, coal, all of those things that we call fossil fuels. The normal things we burn in our houses or drive our cars, those sorts of things that we use in industry. So they, these are what we call fossil fuels. Um, now, <clears throat> why are we worried about this? Why does this really matter? Well, the amount of carbon dioxide and the other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is going up very rapidly. So we can measure how much of these greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. And, and um, what we know is that all of human development has occurred at a time when the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere were very stable. In other words, the climate was very stable. So all of our history, all of human history, going back almost a million years, so we've been here about 300,000 years, and all of that time, it's been a stable climate that's helped us with agriculture and development. But things are rapidly changing. Now, I've got one graph here, and it doesn't matter about the, about the numbers particularly. It just matters about the shape, just the shape's what matters. But all I'm measuring here is the amount of carbon dioxide, the amount of greenhouse gases that are in the atmosphere, so with the amount that's going up there, and the time, going back about almost a million years, right the way through to today. And what you see is a plot like this. And all that matters about this plot is the rough stuff at the bottom. That's what's happened in history. That's 1911. That's 1958. This is carbon dioxide emissions, the main greenhouse gas. And that's today. And that tells you what you need to know. We basically were stable throughout history and we've rocketed up since the Industrial Revolution, mostly since 1950. So a lot, lot of it in my life, not all my fault, but most of it in my life. Um, so the last thing is, what are we committed to do? We know all of this without really any uncertainty. Well, we've committed via something called the Paris Agreement, which some of you might have heard about on climate change. And the Paris Agreement, which almost every country in the world has signed, I think 199, has said that we're going to stop warming, or hold warming below two degrees centigrade above what it was before we started burning fossil fuels, before we started burning coal, oil and gas. And ideally, no more than one and a half degrees centigrade of warming. These are huge temperature changes. On a cold day in Preston, it doesn't really matter, but this means like on average for places like the UK, you might see four, five or six degrees centigrade of warming, which imagine that on a heat wave would be terrible. If you live in Bangladesh, disastrous. So this has really big impacts at a climate level. And we've agreed also that the wealthy developed countries, such as the UK, will lead the way on this in cutting emissions. Um, and it will cut emissions guided by the science. So we've promised to do this, particularly for poorer parts of the world, the more climate vulnerable parts. So what does the science tell us about, about what we need to do if we're to meet our Paris commitments? Now, you can, I've brought this down to the UK, which is the area I mostly work on. And for two degrees centigrade, which is a disaster, we, if we go to two degrees centigrade, that's, I mean, it's better than two and a half, but it's still terrible for many people in the world. They will, lots of people will die as a consequence of two degrees centigrade of warming. People are already dying now at about one to one and a half. It means we have to stop all fossil fuel use by about 2040. Now, if we'd started this earlier, it would have been easier. We didn't. We have to have a big, big cuts in um, emissions from agriculture, mostly about eating meat, particularly red meat and dairy. Now, if we want to stay to one and a half degrees centigrade, which the poor parts of the world have asked us to try and do, have seriously asked us because they've already been impacted, then that means we have to eliminate all fossil fuels by about 2030. 2030. I don't think that's possible, but other people will talk about that. But we need to do everything we can because people are suffering from this today. Broadly, this is the same for every developed country. So what I'm saying here is the same for the Japan, the US, the EU, Australia. So it's the same for all, all rich countries. And the poorer parts of the world get a little bit longer, five to 15 years. So if you're China, you might have five years extra time to get things sorted out. If you're Rwanda, you might get 15 years longer to sort things out. Okay. So that's, that's the broad framing we've got from the Paris Agreement. And it, um, it's about the first time I've ever been on time in a lecture. So that's me trying to capsulate the, 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 the science, well, our, our commitments, and what the science tells us about what we need to do. So if you have any, when you ask questions at the end, don't you? Yeah, ask questions at the end. Oh, well, thank thanks. Thanks much. for listening. Thank you.